Amazing gays, welcome to another episode of the Pipe Bomb Podcast here on YouTube. It's me, your girl Gigi, and we're here. We're going to cover some hot topics in wrestling today, but you know I cannot man the ship alone. I'm also here with my boy. Say what's up, James. Hey, hey. what's up, Gigi? Hey, guys. Welcome back to another episode. I'm excited to be here today, Gigi. Yep, we got some fun stuff to talk about. We really do. So, yeah, we're going to cover a few topics here, but, you know, it's just me and James, so we decided we should have a little guest on, and they're going to be calling in to drop their tea on the situations that are oh going on we wrestling. Have, we're having a guest? Yep. Oh, my God, I wonder who it is. I don't know. Who knows? It's the man himself. <laughs> Is he gonna come and explain himself again? <laughs> By the way, that was a good interview. We'll get it. Oh, we're being interrupted. Just someone's calling. Let's see. Hello. Hello. Hey guys, it's Blake. Hey. Hey, Blake. Right? It's Blake. Yes. All right. We know him from our little Twitter accounts. We give him shoutouts every now and then. How does it feel to be on the show, Blake? Um, it's different. <laughs> um, I haven't talked to, I've never talked with Gigi and James before, so this is a little bit interesting. I've talked with Nikki before, but this is the first time i talked to the two of you, so I'm looking forward to it. Where did you talk to Nikki? Oh, don't even say it. <laughs> 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 I had to stop you there. <laughs> In the other promotion. Uh, what? <laughs> What happened? In the other promotion. What happened? <laughs> well, Blake, we're so excited to have you. I am. I know I'm excited. You know Me why? Too. You know why I'm really excited? Because I have a Bella stand and an AJ stand, and I'm like right in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, it's you. It, oh, it's you, Gigi. Yep. So things have, are gonna happen. <laughs> you have some explaining to do, cause oof. <laughs> I'm I'm a logical AJ stand though. Some so girls, I am, I'm I'm a logical Bella stand. So I'll be I, the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. So the first topic we got up here is Stone Cold. He did a little podcast. I don't know if you guys have you know he has one, and he decided to have a pretty special guest on the CEO, the chairman, the Don. The god of wrestling, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, was on Stone Cold's podcast Monday after Raw went off, and they covered all these topics. People were wondering that they talk about if they were going to talk about CM Punk. They did, and it covered a lot of stuff. So one thing that was like that really stuck out, as we said, CM Punk. They actually brought it up. Vince apologized for sending the papers on his wedding day. He said it was not on purpose. He also said one day that he hopes that they can bury the hatchet and come back together. But right now, they do not have a working relationship. <laughs> mm. And he said it was communication that was the issue, that Punk did not communicate. So what do you boys think about Vince McMahon talking about CM Punk and all this tea that was spilled and him trying to wipe it back up? I, I liked how um, Stone Cold seg segued into it. He was like, well, I'm going to ask you a yep or nope question. And then he just laid it on him. You want to talk about CM Punk? And Vince just went in. I, I, I can't say I was surprised that he talked about CM Punk because I knew like he has the balls to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, um, when he went in about um, the apology of sending it on his um, wedding day, I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> I just, I just don't know if I believe that. But. Um, I, I liked I like that he apologized for it. I thought that was respectable. And I also I also do hope that they mend that bridge. And I liked how he also mentioned how he had problems with other um, top guys in the past, and they always came back and they mend their situations. But I don't know. It was just a great interview. And that that question was a good question and good on Stone Cold for asking him. I thought Stone Cold was gonna go easy on him, but he wasn't. And I have a feeling he was going to ask. What do you think, Blink? Well, what's it called? Um, like what James said about how guys have done this in the past. Um, Chris Jericho, he responded to um, Stone Cold's podcast with um, Vince McMahon. And he was saying that um, he went through the exact same thing with Vince way back when um, his contract issues or whatever. So Chris Jericho went through the exact same thing. They had they ended at one time on bad terms. And then Chris Jericho, obviously, he's back with the company. 
So, um, you know, I think eventually he will come back. I feel like him saying right now that one thing in the, uh, one thing in that interview, first of all, I do think that 70% of what he said was true. I feel like he's the only guy out there that can really, he really like threw WWE under the bus. Like seriously, especially Hunter and Stephanie and everybody. I just think that there was one part where he said that his lawyer told WWE officials that he hates wrestling, now he despises it. Wait a minute. You don't have to despise it because you wouldn't have invested that much time in your career. If you really despised it, you would have left a lot sooner. Wait, like, wh- what are you talking about? Remember in his interview, he was talking about how yeah. his his lawyer told WWE officials that he hates wrestling. He wants nothing to do with professional wrestling anymore. He despises it. His that's lawyer. Why will, and that's why he will, yeah, and that's why he will never work. Yeah, they were, ask, they they were asking just... him. Yeah, go ahead, Gigi. Yeah, he said that he can't um, wrestle with any other company. And he's like, well, I don't want to because I hate wrestling now. Because they're just like, he can't go to TNA or UFC. Yeah, they were threatened that he was going to go to TNA. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, his lawyer told them. Because him and cause Punk and WWE were not having any conversations. It was all through lawyers. So their lawyers told, his lawyer told their lawyers that he's not going to be signing with any other promotion. He's not going to do indies. He's not going to do anything. He just doesn't want to do wrestling, period. And apparently he's, like, fucking happy, so whatever. But I do think that one day he will come back. I just think it's going to take a lot, like you said, communication. Oh, you're talking about CM Punk's interview? Yes. You're saying that you don't believe what he was saying? No, 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 no. I'm saying that I don't believe that he will never, that he despises wrestling. I feel like even though his lawyer said that was true, I just don't think that. Deep down inside, I know CM Punk is, he loves the, he loves professional wrestling. I just think there were times that people are true. He does whine when he doesn't get his way. But how do you know he, that? You don't know if this guy truly is done with it. Because some people can, like, people can become hairdressers and then they despise being a hairdresser. They never want to do hair anymore. And I have family members who used to do hair. They don't do it anymore. They hate it. They won't touch hair. So I can see somebody who's wrestling, traveling, like, 300 days a year could be like, fuck this it's not even worth it i'm throwing my life away my youth my body so i can see him falling out of love with it because it happens yeah no i agree i'm just saying i just if he like i think if he were to come back i think that would be like the biggest shocker ever because the way he was talking about wwe and the way he was talking about people backstage you can really tell that he has a lot of anger and he has a lot of things that he wants to get off his chest but I believe if he does come back, it's not going to be anytime soon at all. Yeah. Hey. That's a lot. <laughs> CM Punk yeah, is just going my, through it. Like decisions? This, I, CM Punk is going through it. He, this business broke his heart. He thought he was going to yes. be the top guy in the world. And obviously he's mad. Like, people are like, get over it, get over it. Like, you can't get over it. This is his dream. It's his dream to right. re event WrestleMania. He was so close. And they just kept shitting on him. I understand his frustrations. I understand his cheap shots. I understand why he was so pissy and moody backstage. Like, I get his frustration. I'm one of the people that understand what the fuck he's going through. Like, that's... It's bullshit. I'm one of, I am his fan. I'm not gonna sit and just trash on him because the the company did shit on him when they have somebody like i always go back to him john cena who who's garbage in the ring why won't they i understand that john cena is all this he's all that he's all he he's for the kids um he sells the most merch but what cm punk explained all of this and that he did have all the merch he topped um, John Cena selling merchandising, that's when they should have elevated him. But they chose not to. They went and turned him heel, which was the thing that set him on his downfall from ever reaching his goal to become, um, to end up wrestling at a main event on WrestleMania. So I can understand his frustration where he's coming from. It's like getting the rug pulled right under your feet. So you can't just come at him when a business really shitted on him like that. Like, and the funny thing is, what pisses me off is that people, they're on Twitter saying, oh, oh, B 
be quiet. Oh, you big baby, whatever. Oh, get over it, get over it. But they're the same people, like, a year ago when he was going through all this bullshit were the same people like, oh, this is bullshit, WWE. Oh, my God, CM Punk needs to be a main event. Why is it always John Cena? CM Punk exactly. is doing all the bitching. And now that he's out here joining the fight where I'm um, letting people know, I agree with you guys at that time. Now he's speaking his truth from what happened to him prior, and people are just giving it to him. It's like, shut the fuck up and grow up. Like, let him speak his truth. You don't want to hear it? Block him on Twitter. Like he said, CM Punk said it the best. Twitter is like your kitchen window. If you don't want to hear shit, you go and you close your fucking window. You block him. That's all you need to fucking do. People are just so annoying. I'm over it. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. The only thing I feel like when he said, like, oh, he despises it now, like, you can't really despise it because it wasn't for wrestling. You never would have met AJ. And... Yeah, that's just spite. He's... Mad. I don't think it's true. Like you can't. I don't feel like I'm not gonna pinpoint everything. Oh, you don't really do it. You don't really, really, really. He's he's just a guy vet and he's human. I don't say people put celebrities on a pedestal where they can't like vet like Make mistakes. Like, like look at Rihanna. Rihanna smokes weed and all this bullshit. Like she's a great example. She don't give a fuck. She does what she wants to do. And um, people are saying that she's a bad role model. She's this, she's that, because she's placing all this marijuana for her fans. Her fans, she's human. She don't give a fuck. You parent your own fucking kids. Don't come and worry about what fucking Rihanna's doing. Don't worry about CM Punk. Like, let him be mad. I don't understand. <laughs> Okay, so moving on, another thing that was brought up in the podcast was Stone Cold, he asked Vinnie Mac, so what about these guys that have all this talent, but they're not on the show? They talk about how they need to start making these guys stars so we can move on from the John Cena's and the Randy Orton's. And he asked him, he's like, I was talking to this guy today backstage, Cesaro. He's a good looking guy. He's good in the ring. Why isn't he like in the main events? Why isn't, doesn't he have like spotlight on TV? And then he was honest. He didn't bullshit. He pretty much said that Cesaro, he's good in ring. He has a good look. But at the end of the day, he doesn't have any charisma. He doesn't have it. Yeah. And he pretty much said that he, um, he has like, he's not good on the mic. He said that maybe it's a Swiss thing, but. I'm pretty surprised that Vince was that honest because I thought he was going to be like, oh, we just don't know where we want to put him right now. We're trying to see different things. He didn't bullshit. He said he has no charisma. We've been saying this for a very long time on the podcast and other people have too. So what did you guys think? That's one thing I've always said about Cesaro. He has no charisma. He can't talk. That's his trouble. That's his struggle over there. And Vince called it out. And I love how honest he was about it. He didn't sugarcoat it, nothing. It is what it is. Yeah, I agree. I think... Like, anytime, like, Cesaro's on the mic, it's never, it never draws attention. He never, the only time he gets a pop is when he does the swing, and that's it. And, like, everyone always says, the perfect package is you have to have skill and you have to have mic skills. If you have both of those and you have a good look, then you're going to get over and people will cheer for you, boo you, whatever. But another thing that I want to address with Vince McMahon about putting charisma aside for Cesaro, this is the problem for WWE. They need to get out of this stupid-ass mold that they have for these guys. They want everybody to look a certain way. They want everybody to be a certain way. I understand it's business, but at the end of the day, people will cheer and boo for whoever they want, and they'll put over anybody they want. But the fact that you're not letting guys like... I admit, what is his face? Um, Seth Rollins. He had mentioned something about Seth Rollins. Um, I'm not sure what he said about Seth Rollins because I don't remember what he said, but Seth Rollins had put a tweet out that was directed towards Vince McMahon about what he said about... Did y'all see that tweet that he put out? Yeah. About what did he say? He did, like, how about that for he, um He ambition? said, like, oh, he said, oh, you want me to get this brass ring? I'll do it at TLC. And he's like, how's that for ambition? As I'm brass saying, he's ring. saying that they're lacking ambition and stuff like that. But it's like... Vince has, like, he's, like, he knows this business so well, and he knows, like, basically what's best for business, no pun intended. Um, But I just feel like people need to get out of that mold. Like, people, like, especially, like, with, um, what's his face? Dolph Ziggler. They were, like, burying him and never giving him a push or anything, and, like, people would, like, literally bash Hunter and Vince on Twitter, and they, like, how are you not going to push this guy? Like, he has a total package or whatever, and everything like that. And then, like, even Hunter admitted on TV. 
he'll be like, the guy y'all think I don't give a chance. And like, he literally is mocking like what we're saying, but it's true. It's like, you don't, not everybody's going to be a John Cena. Not everyone's going to be an undertaker. Not everyone's going to be a Randy Orton. And that's what they need to get out of. I feel like they're just setting up this mold and that's not what they, I feel like we need stuff that's fresh. I don't need another John Cena. I don't need another Randy Orton. I don't need another undertaker. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I see where you're coming from there, because when he said it, I was all like, not every guy is going to be, like, a CM Punk talker. Wrestling would be great exactly. if it was. Exactly. Like, I'm fine with Cesaro, like, okay, he can't talk on the mic. We have um, Paul Heyman that you guys put him with. It didn't work, but Brock Lesnar, think... he can't talk worth shit, and he's your WWE champion. Randy Orton, he has a good promo every now and then, but he's one of those legendary wrestlers, so I think it was kind of like... I can see that you want, like, every wrestler to be amazing, but sometimes you have to take what you can get, and Cesaro is so good in the ring to the point, like, he doesn't have to cut these five-star promos. I feel like Cesaro shouldn't even talk, honestly, at all. Yeah. His gimmick He needs a manager. He needs needs someone, and the person that he needs, WWE currently doesn't employ. Like, I feel like they need to go out and find an actor to just talk. Find somebody who can talk, somebody who's, who can speak Swiss, whatever, f- make an accent, who knows, and have somebody that's a talker for him. Because that's the only way I can see him making it. Because when he's on the stage, he doesn't come in a presence. He doesn't when he's talking. When he's in the ring, it's a whole different ball game. But he just doesn't have charisma. And I then said the fucking goddamn truth. Because I've always said that. That's why he never, Cesaro never clicked with me like that. That I could see him as a top guy. As athletic as he is. I just, I just don't see it for him. Because talking is so important. It's mm-hmm. so important in wrestling, especially yeah. when you're trying to build a promo, especially when you're trying to make people care enough to spend thousands of dollars to go to a WrestleMania and watch your main event. You should be able to hold your own on a mic. So that's why for Cesaro, I just don't see it for him because you, if it was up to him to cut a promo for a WrestleMania main event, he wouldn't be able to do it. It just it's the truth. It would be it would be like bad. Like I can't even I can't even see him as like world champion at all because the people always say like he's like the future. He's a future world champion. I do not see it. The only thing I can see, I can't get out of my head, is like United States champion. That's it. That's as far as that's as far as you're gonna go. Unless you get down the mic skills, that's what people care about. People crave promos. People. This is how people get behind you. This is how people either get behind you or boo you. You have to have the mic skills. That's like a very very important asset. And if and you I don't have it. I feel like with him, it's not even only the mic skills. It's like his facial impressions are not very conveying. They're not convincing at all. It's just very, like, like um, animated. Like, he's like, oh, my God. I feel like he really needs an acting coach. Remember, Gigi, when we talked about... No, I think it was me and Nikki about w, if WWE has... They need an acting coach. They need to bring in somebody, hire them, and have mm-hmm. the backstage with these people. And Cesaro could probably benefit from someone like that. It's like, help them out. Don't have actors teach these... Don't have other wrestlers teach people how to act. When a- acting is a craft at its own. You gotta find somebody who's mastered the craft, the art of acting, and have them come teach these superstars. Not some washed-up superstar. No shade. But... And see, that's what um, Roman Reigns, he took acting classes because he knows that people were not... Like, people were saying his promo, his promos are crap. I don't... I personally don't think that his promos, his oh, promos are dry. crap. I think his promos are good. But he did, took the initiative to take acting classes so he can improve himself. And that's what some of these guys and girls need to do. They need to go outside of WWE and take acting classes or whatever just to improve your character. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. The one thing I would like to see, though, because like you said, oh, Cesaro doesn't have charisma. Like, what about someone like Dolph Ziggler who he has charisma, he has the look, he's good in ring. Like, what's your reason for why he's not on TV or other guys that have, like, all the tools but you just seem not to, like, fuck with them? So really, and like, I wouldn't like seen, I would have wanted Stone Cold X like, oh, what about the divas? Like, the, like they didn't even bring up the divas. It's only like Stephanie. I'm like, so why are these girls like the total divas thing? I'd like to see more like Vince's thoughts on that. So was there anything that um you guys want else want to talk about from the interview or things that you wish that they covered? I, I liked when he talked about Shane quickly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like that too. They covered I forgot that. he existed. I always forget. <laughs> 
I, oh my god, how can you? I love Shane. Shane was one of my favorite attractions. He wasn't even a wrestler. When Shane was wrestling at a pay-per-view, I was excited. Because I know that Shane would go all out. So I'm like, how does a guy who like almost killed himself for this company, literally, um, just walk away like that? Like, wash his hands and walk away? And I like the little story that Vince told. Vince was like, that um, before Shane used to work for him, for WWE, I guess he was selling merch or something like that. So he asked his dad for a raise. And Vince was like, how the hell are you going to come ask me for a raise? And all this bullshit. There's people that's been there working longer than you. So Shane quit and went to go get his own job. So, and he's like, and I was proud of him that he went off and did his own thing. So he kind of like used that as a saying to what Shane is doing now. That he's proud that Shane left the nest to go do his own thing. So I thought that was cute. That he respects his son. Even though they don't get along, and he even said that they, they didn't get along working together. And I thought that was interesting, that Shane had his doubts and all this bullshit. But can you imagine if Shane was running WWE? I would love to see that. But apparently Shane got his own business. He's doing his own things up in China, so good for Shane. I miss him, though. I would love to see him come back. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. I feel like Shane could go in the Hall of Fame, honestly. He could, because he did put on, like, he was, like, really good, and he didn't have to be out there at all. Like, they would say Vince doesn't have to be out there. Like, Shane really doesn't, and he, like, put his body on the line. Yes, and he used to cut great promos. Shane, I feel like the McMahons, they could cut a promo like nobody's business. Like, Do you think that he would be inducted alone, or do you think he'd be inducted as, like, the McMahons? I don't know. I think Shane should go in by himself. Yeah. He's yes, he did a lot of good stuff. But, like, yeah. inducting the whole McMahon family is, like, sucking your own dick. It's, like, you know, you don't do this. Because <laughs> it's, like, it's their company, so why would you put yourself in your own thing? That, yeah, that would be kind of be awkward. Like, yeah, always that be kind of weird. Vince in the Hall of Fame, like, you are the Hall of Fame. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're the grim keeper of the Hall of Fame. Good, yeah. So, anything else you guys want to talk about from there before we move on? Oh, my God. Let me think. There was so much. Actually, I also like how how freaking smart Vince is when... Um, hold on. Let me get this ice out of my mouth. Sorry. I also liked how Vince was when um, she, um, he was, like, dancing around the story and... <laughs> Um, Stone Cold was like, alright, get to the point. And I was like, just, Stone Cold was just over it with him when Vince was dancing around questions because they were running out of time and he wanted to hit all his major questions. And then Vince was yeah. like, what? Two minutes? This is, I own the damn thing. We're gonna go on another 15 minutes. So I like that. And he was very smart for doing that because he kept people tuned in instead of losing the viewers on his network going on to Stone Cold's thingy. So, and another thing... Um, that's the smartest thing he ever fucking did. They were like, tw he was like, um, what was it? What do you call it when you, go he was trending. They were trending on Twitter. The network was trending. So that's pretty great. Stone Cold got him trending, trending yeah. an extra hour. They were trending like all night and the network. So that's like great publicity doing Stone Cold's podcast. So I, I would love for Stone Cold to have his own show on the network doing this. I think that would be awesome. It would yeah, bring so that. many subscribers. Yes. They're so thirsty for subscribers right now. Kinda, so this would be the perfect way. Kind of like a late night talk show and like bring on wrestlers to just talk wrestling. I think it would be amazing. It would give something for all these old time Hall of Famers to do. Come on and throw shade about wrestlers that are dead. Like I would love to see that shit. Not like wrestlers mm -hmm. that died. Like I'm talking about the ones all the way back in the day. The ones that yeah. lived a good full life and passed away. And come in and talk, you know, throw their shade about each other back then. Like how Vince was over here throwing shade to his own fucking roster. I can't with that. <laughs> yeah. Nice team too much. Cause I, yeah, because when... The only thing that other than that made me laugh was at the end. He's like, where can people reach you if they want to give their opinions on the network or WWE? And, like, Vince looks so lost. He's like, people giving their opinions? No, oh, no. He's like, WWE.com and Twitter. And he's like, Vince McMahon's Twitter. Like, you know you don't read that shit, Vince. Let's be real. He don't read shit. Everything he kept saying was, I listen to the fans. I listen to the fans. When? When are you listening to the fans? They made, like, this hilarious meme. It's all like, of course I listen to the fans. John Cena has 15 and Tyler Reigns. I was like, oh, my God, they tried it. Yeah. <laughs> but moving on from Vinnie Mac, they got warrants out here, y'all. 
this just is like breaking news. Heath Slater, you know, like the great main event wrestler, he has a warrant for his arrest out of Atlanta because oh supposedly. Oh my god, I am over at, it. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, supposedly, at, we're seeing allegedly here, at a WrestleMania 27 after party in 2011, this woman named Corrine, Corrine, Corrine Oliver, who was security at the event, claimed Slater choked her and tried to get her into an elevator and up to his room at the Hyatt Re- Regency in Atlanta. She claims that he attacked her, and now her vertebrae and her back is messed up since the attack, and that oh other wrestlers were there and then try to help her at all and just <laughs> let him do what he wanted to do. And she said the reason she waited to report this is because her, su- her supervisors weren't doing it. So now, I guess... Uh, Girl, bye. This and for a simple assault slash battery. Girl, bye. That is one lie. If I haven't heard a lie before, a uh, really wrestling no twenty seven. She's no, she's thirsty for attention. No. Are you kidding me? This bitch just flipped by TV and must have saw him on TV. Like I'm gonna say he's the one who did it, because that <laughs> is such a fucking bullshit lie. And she probably saw him walk by the hotel. And was like, oh my god, I saw him. I should go say he raped me and take money from him. Girl, bye. I'm, but I'm out of all her place to choose, though, he's Slater. Like, maybe, like, if it was someone, like, big and burly or something, like, like Ryback. I can see Ryback maybe doing that shit, but okay. he's Slater. He looks like, like, we've seen, like, I, there's a photo of him on the internet, like, in a, like, lingerie with, like, Playboy bunny ears. I don't see him trying to show the bitch out. Okay, Gigi, where did this happen? In Atlanta, Seven. so it was after WrestleMania 27 at where? an after party. At so that was 2011, so that was three years ago. At an after yeah. party where? WrestleMania at after the, party? Yeah, at the hotel that they were staying at. Oh. Why was she there? How did she even get in? What it just the... says she was working security. And she got dragged into the room? It just says that he that he pat her in a chokehold and he got... Like, it doesn't say how she got out or whatever happened. It just says... She was in a chokehold, and he tried, and he dragged her into the elevator. Into the elevator. Was, okay, that's where I needed you to take me. The elevator, where ha- which has cameras. <laughs> that's girl. Sh- good night. This would have been all over TMZ everywhere if it really happened. Come on, they caught Solange beating up Jay Z on a fucking elevator. You mean to tell me you won't catch Heat Slater, a redneck wrestler? Good night. This is a lie. If, uh, and wait, she was working security? Yeah, she's security. She's a security guard. She's no. security. <laughs> False. No, move on. <laughs> Show me the receipts. I need the receipts, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> so until we get a video, this bitch is yeah. lying. It's irrelevant. Lying if it's true, I'll apologize. He's running away from the police right now, which is hilarious. If it's true, I'll apologize. But <laughs> girl, bye. I won't. So, the next thing we have here is from Raw. Naomi, they are giving the bitch a push. We have been waiting for this moment, or at least I have. If you didn't see, she was on Raw, and while Jimmy and Jay were in the tag team turmoil match, she was all watching them, looking at her man like, ooh, look at my boo. Then after the Usos win, they show her again. Miz gives her a card, and he's all like, I see you twerking in your video. I can I can get you to great places. And then Sandow oh gives her God. another big card. And she doesn't say anything which upset me, but you can see on her face, she's like, what the fuck? And then you can see, like, on the baby's Instagram, they have, like, a photo, and she's, like, showing him, like, look what he tried to give me. And then later on, like, Uso, like, slaps him in the ring, and he's all like, oh, don't talk to my wife. And then this gets taken to Twitter, which is hilarious. We have... Um, Maurice, the wife of Miz, and he, she pretty much said that she's not worried, she's not, like, threatened by Naomi, that Miz is gonna cheat because he's just trying to help, like, a little, like, lonely girl that needs some help getting out there in the music business, and then Naomi responds, she's like, oh, I don't need your man's help, you, you're sitting back, um, like, she's just pretty much says, like, oh, you're retired now, and that she slaps, like, her husband, so, a lot is coming up here. Are we going to have a Maurice return? We're getting a Naomi push. The Maurice return is inevitable. It's going to happen. I don't know why. This is, like, the one return. This is, like, the one return that I've wanted. But it's, like, one of those returns that, like... Like, you know how some of us would be like, Oh, my God, I want Michelle McCool to come back. Or, Oh, my God, I want Karma to come back. This mm-hmm. return is, like... If it is set up... If she does come back, it would have been, like, the most anticipated return of all time. No, I'm kidding. Um, but... What's it called? Um... 
I think she is going to come back. I don't think it's going to be, f- like, I don't think she's going to have, like, another four-year run, but I do think that she will come back and they'll insert her. Like, you know, Naomi kind of managed the Usos, and, like, Maurice kind of managed the, um, to the, what's it called, the stunt doubles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but I think she will come back. The fact that it was, no, the reason why is because, first of all, she, like, Miz put out a tweet, like, about two months, like, about a month and a half ago saying how, like, Miz, me and my wife are not even, like, my wife's not even WWE no more, yet we're a trending power couple for that poll they did on W.com, or whatever. And then he's like, stay tuned, you may see it, you may see it in the future, whatever. That's the first clue. Second of all, Maurice inserting herself on Twitter is another clue. And then third of all, it's like, she's not doing anything else. I mean, like, what else are you doing? I feel like the thing with Maurice is, this is all a build for her to come back. Because when they did raise that poll, she was trending on Twitter. And then she also um, put on Twitter the other night. She's like, I, I, I haven't even left my, in her act, I haven't even left my coach and I'm trending on Twitter. So she is coming back. And she's coming back with a whole new gimmick. She's going to be the celebrity. Because that's what she's coming in as, as Miz's hot wife. She's a socialite and all this bullshit. They're kind of like a Kim perfectly. Kardashian. And she's going to come in. She's going to be on Total Divas. That's a given. She's going to come in and she's going to be like her. She's going to cut a promo. I haven't been here and everybody's still talking about Maurice and all this bullshit. Because it's the truth. The bitch hasn't been there. They talked about her all throughout AJ's reign. Remember? Oh, Maurice. She's going to talk Maurice. Maurice, Maurice, Maurice. The Miz came back. Oh, your wife, Maurice. The Miz even mentioned her in a promo. And now they have that poll thing. Like, Maurice is coming back. Girl, bye. You ain't fool no one. But I'm excited because I love that bitch. And I can't wait to come in. And I think she's work- working with Naomi is so great. I love. Remember when Stone Cold and Triple H had that feud and their wives got involved? I always love that shit. Yeah. So I love that the wives are going at it. And I think this is great for Naomi. I'm glad that they pinned her with her man because I know she's been dying for it. And I, I want to see her come out with them. I want to see her stop managing them. I can't wait until that starts going along. I can't wait for her to do the face paint because I know she's going to do it and it's going to look flawless on her. And Sandra also tweeted that she's working on new attire, a new attire for Naomi. So uh, I'm excited for her. It's going to be cool. Well, hold on with Miss Sandra. We, She's been saying that that ringer has been coming for like about two good months now. So I don't understand what's taking so long. Somebody asked her two months ago, new gear coming? Yes. And then it's like weeks later, the, the ring gear's still not here. The ring gear should have been put on her at Survivor Series. It would have been the perfect timing. I don't understand why it's still not here. People have been I don't like, know. Maybe when she says that she's working on it, she she does other superstars. Like They probably tell her maybe she's sketching them down. She's coming up with different ideas. Maybe that's her saying she's working on it because the bitch is not sitting on her ass. Are you kidding me? She works for Vince McMahon. Damn it. <laughs> she needs working. a new theme, though. Oh, my God. It's she, desperate. She does. I'm so she happy she's getting like, it. Like, they need to give her something that's just, like, hip-hop. Because I'm still trying to figure out how Cameron, who's just, like, a total waste, gets new music. And then Naomi's running around with fucking Funk, funk is on a roll. And people calling her mom. Oh, leave and this checker and leggings and stuff. I can't. I love Cameron. <laughs> people always shade Cameron. She's doing so well, by the way. So, do you think we're going to get a match with Naomi and Maurice, or is Maurice just coming back to kind of be a talker? This is what I think is going to happen. I think that it's going to be the match at TLC, and I think that um, um, Naomi's going to come out and manage the Usos, and then they're going to have the Sun Doubles, and then, like, um, I think Maurice is going to return at TLC, and I think she's going to interfere and make the Sun Doubles win. If Maurice doesn't return by... TLC or Monday Night Raw, I don't think it's she's not. Gonna come it's out. not gonna happen. Right. It has to happen within the next three weeks. Yeah. Because TLC is two weeks away, so it's like two Sundays away. So it needs to happen within these next two weeks. If it doesn't happen, like he, like James said, if it doesn't happen, TLC or the Monday Night Raw afterwards, then it's it's not, not it's, gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. So I want it to happen. So maybe just get it together, girlfriend. I I need to see some French kisses. I used to love mm-hmm. her entrance, the hair flip, everything. Maybe this was one of my favorites next to Melina. Especially when Melina was a baby face. I, that's when I grew to love maybe it's because she was such a cocky heel. And I missed that. And I love yeah, the, the hand. Her hand, doing the hand yeah. thing. It's going to be such a perfect role for her to play the celebrity because like, that's totally like her, her role, her yeah, place. Yeah, and they could probably bring somebody up as her assistant. They could probably bring Bailey. Oh my God, that would be so perfect for Bailey. <laughs> Have her come up and be 
Maurice's sister. Can you believe it? She would love it because Maurice is a former diva. You know how Bailey loves superstars and stuff like that. Yeah. It'd be a great way to bring Bailey. Up I can see Maurice. Master. Don't touch me. Don't. Yeah. No, don't touch Maurice's me. Like, you, you're breathing on me. You're breathing. Because you, Bailey's kind of like, she's like so breathy. She's like, yeah. She's always like that. I'm like, girl. <laughs> so I could picture her being like dorky behind Maurice. I think it would be perfect. Come on, WWE. They need some fresh people in that writing room, I tell you. But, James, do you think that you said she'll definitely be on Total Divas, <laughs> which I agree, but she won't be on for season four. So season five. There's too many bitches on Total Divas. I don't think she needs to be on there. Why? You know, I really... I the, the, I feel like every diva should be on Total Divas. Whoa, no. I have no, to agree no, with Tom. No, no. I feel... Yes, this is how I feel like. I feel like it should just be the divas locker room. I want Layla in there. I want Rosa Mendes' hot-ass mess. It could be like Dallas cheerleaders. Like, you ever want... That thing's been on CMT yeah. forever. But so, they would not have enough time in an hour to showcase... That's okay. Team. We don't need to see everybody every day. I don't need to see everybody every day. I'm good. The, the, what they need to do is they need to cut down the Bellas, because the Bellas are all over that damn show, and then it'll be alright. Hey. Like, they could actually have the Divas all hang out more together. Like, they could easily do this. Like, alright, after that, we would like the Divas to go to this bar. Like, you know, and have the Divas go out there for drinks and talk, and then they could get their footage there. Like, they can do this. Like, I, I wouldn't mind all the Divas. They practically already have all the Divas on the damn show they do i'm not ready yeah. i'm ready for the next season it's gonna be like it's gonna be so much going on like i can't imagine covering the shit <laughs> i know i can't wait alicia fox and cameron i can't wait for that oh girl i can't wait to see and, and I, Paige I, fucking turn into world star hip-hop like yeah. i watched a preview like a couple days ago i'm like i forgot Paige was like running around like whipping ass like, loving hip-hop atlanta yeah and did you see fucking what's her face that bitch from tna she was standing in the room oh um what's her name um SoCal Val. Yeah, she's standing. I was like, this girl. Oh, that's is, what she's being up. She, she, what is she no, doing there? SoCal Val. Oh. I guess it was SoCal Val's girl that got ragtagged by Paige. In I the cannot apartment. wait. What is? Paige Who was went, sitting on the couch? Paige Wasn't it Fandango? I think Fandango was sitting on the couch. Yeah, I think they were at his apartment. I was like, okay. Fandango is so sleazy. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. He's sitting. You know, it's the bad when they don't even put his real name, like Johnny Curtis or whatever. And it's like, fucking Fandango. Like, shit. Well, did you hear about how um, on one of the one of the dark sheets I was reading is that all the new castmates ever since Summer came on, they're all using their WWE character names and they're not using their real names anymore. So mm-hmm. on Total Divas, Paige, her name is going to be Paige on there. They're not going to call her Soraya. And Alicia, they're not going to call her Victoria, they're calling her Alicia. That's fine. Ooh, a reality which I, which, which I don't mind. I mean, No, but the thing is, like, they don't want to confuse their, the viewers. The viewers. Because they, they obviously want the viewers to, to, to trans, um, you know, to flow into Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. So they'll be familiarized with the girls. So it, that's okay for me. Like, they could use their working names. It's fine. Because, you know, like, celebrities like Lady Gaga, if she was on a reality show, they'd call her Lady Gaga. They're not going to call her Stephanie. So it's fine. It's their stage names. A lot of I famous guess. people don't even go by their real names. I know, but then there's, like, the wrestlers. Like, if you call them by their real name, they go off. So I guess this is better for them. <laughs> like CM Punk. <laughs> Can yeah, I get like, don't call him Phil, I guess, if you don't know him. Yeah. Mm-mm. If I met CM Punk, I'd be so respectful. I'd be like, oh, my God, CM Punk, can I please get an autograph? <laughs> Is that nice? No, you have, no, he said you have to do it first. You have to introduce yourself. Oh. Say, hi, you have to introduce yourself, say hello, and ask politely, do you want an autograph? I'd be like, hello, CM Punk. I am James Lopes. My social is blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, my blood type is A B negative. Yes, <laughs> I am. A my top. address is. Yeah, uh, do you want my grinder? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> Hit me up on Keek, please. Seriously, wait a minute. But kick us for thoughts, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> Everybody hits me up on fucking Instagram, and they be like, "Yo, you got kick? You got kick?" I was like, "What the fuck? Why do people want kick?" I don't understand, and then come to find out all the ratchets be on that shit. Yeah, that's where all my my friend gets all her nudes. It's amazing. Real, hey guys, it, yeah, um, that's what it's for. I don't have one. I can't. Wait, WWE is tweeting about me, Reese. I can't get enough divas. Get all the best vintage 
in current diva photos. They tweeted that, and then they, I think they put it on their Facebook, and they put a picture of Mary's. It's going down Monday, I can feel it. Because they're going to show the tweets, and then they're going to be like, yeah. oh, Maurice. They should make her come, like, via satellite, like Roman Reigns. <laughs> I know. Or they could have the Miss Backstage Skype her. Or, like, face, <laughs> I can face, see face text or something. Like, Miss got to be current. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to I can have... see the FaceTime, and then, like, Sanda holding, like, an invisible phone doing the same thing. I can see mm-hmm. it. Yeah, he could be like... That would be so funny. Uh, uh, I swear, but we should write for the WWE. If she could, like, Miz now, like, a standee of Maurice when she, like, debuts with Miz, and, like, he just, like, walks around with it and has it, like, next to him. <laughs> too, too funny. Okay. So, guys, our next little topic here is we've been having this feud for a while, and now it's the Bella Twins versus AJ. And as we know, AJ, she had her little mic time after she lost the title on Monday, and she said the little thing of talent isn't a sexually transmitted disease. And then Nikki, unfortunately for her, she did cut a promo on SmackDown. She was talking about how she worked just as hard as a- she worked harder than AJ. And we're tired of hearing AJ's sob story, and she's like a pathetic girl from New Jersey. But unfortunately, it got cut down. Maybe it's because it didn't really, she sounded a little too face, or it was just like, it's a diva promo who gives a fuck, so let's cut it down. But she had her words, and then again on Monday, they didn't have any mic time. She, AJ went against Brie, correct? Um, it was a tag match. This past okay, Monday, like Ryan Naomi and AJ yeah. versus Bellas, yeah. Yes. So that happened. There was no mic time. We don't know if we're going to get another match between the two. But, you know, at, when promos happen, people, they start tweeting about it, Tumblr posts, and AJ fans versus Bella Twins fans, it's been fucking crazy. Bella Twins fans, it's, oh, AJ went too far, how could she say that? And AJ fans are like, oh, it's what the writers told her to say, don't you guys know that wrestling is scripted? And then Bella Twin fans, when Snicky's promo got cut down, oh, they say that John Cena, like, always has the, is like, why Nikki is so great, but, like, they cut down her promo, blah, blah, blah. And now it it, it kind of died down since, but still it's going. So me being an AJ Lee fan, and then we have here Blake, who's a Bella Twins fan, what do you think of this drama between these ladies, Blake? Okay, first of all, this is where I'm going to get, I'm going to get rolling into this podcast real quick. First things first, AJ, you want to claim to my Bellas, Talent is not sexually transmitted. However, from the time you debuted to 2013, you slept your way to the top. You want to talk about people who slept their way to the top? Excuse you, says the person who's been with Daniel Bryan, Primo, Hornswoggle, Dolph Ziggler, Kane, CM Punk, John Cena, and Dolph Ziggler. Do not play. This girl, the only reason, I guarantee you, I know this is going to sound harsh, but the only reason why this girl is over right now is because she's married to CM Punk, and if she wouldn't have ever gotten with any of those guys, this girl would still be that little skull crush candy little girl from New Jersey. Period. <laughs> and, hold, and, wait, and wait, hold on. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> you are going to get mad. <laughs> They're gonna don't get apart. me wrong. I love AJ Lee. I think she's done some great things for the division. I think she's revived it in a way. However, you are not the division. Nikki Isbella is still the Divas champion, and you can't change that. And I feel like with the fan, now I go to the fan part. None of this is addressed towards Gigi because Gigi is a logical AJ fan and she doesn't have the time nor the patience to argue with people on Twitter because she doesn't have time for that. So I'm going to get into it. First of all, these AJ Lily fans want to be like, Ugh, all you want to do is complain. AJ Lee is the queen. AJ Lee is the champion. She doesn't need the proof. She doesn't need the belt to be champion. Okay, first of all, yes, she does because she doesn't have the championship. She's not the champion. And second of all, you AJ Lee fans cannot stand when the spotlight isn't on her. God, for God's sake, can someone be, can some, can the spotlight be on someone else besides Paige and AJ? I love Paige too. Okay, but... okay, okay. I'm going to cut you off. I can't. <laughs> oh, you didn't talk about Paige. <laughs> you, you went on for a day and another day. Listen, bitch. The thing with the Bella Twins and AJ. <laughs> AJ okay, you're the mediator. No, no, listen. 
No, no because you just you, you, threw, you threw okay. so much shade. Hold on, guys. Let's you take a break. Let's Hello. take a break. Oh, Nikki, Nikki, you're here. Hello, yes, Nikki. I just got here. Sorry, guys, I'm <laughs> late. I had some family drama, but I'm back. Oh, ooh. That family drama okay. will do okay. it to you. Hold on. Hold, hold on. No 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 You said you said enough, Blake. You've said enough. You said enough. This is hold on. No, no, hold on. You're not gonna get bashed. You said enough. But the whole thing about AJ and the Bella Twins things, I like AJ Lee, I like Nikki Bella. I don't know about Bree, but Bree's I. But the thing is no, this is all a storyline. When AJ said the sexually transmitted disease thing, it was to make the feud personal. And it, it did, it, it ignited that. The, the Divas Division needed something like this. I love how you're very passionate about the Bella Twins and you want AJ Lee to, like, get hit by a truck. I love that shit. Because, like... <laughs> no, 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 I never said No, that. like, the, the way you went in on the girl, I was like, damn, did she, like, take his firstborn? But, um, the thing, <laughs> the thing is, like... I love that the fans are all crazy about it and I'm loving it. I'm all here for it. But I feel like the comment that she said towards the Bella Twins would have been more justified on somebody like Rosa Mendez, honestly, because um, the Bella Twins can actually wrestle and they do have talent. I feel like these girls <laughs> are talented. GG. <laughs> GG. <laughs> oh I'm going to just hold my Hold on, GG. This is my piece about the whole thing. I feel like the Bella Twins are talented. I really do. I do believe it. I love Nikki Bella. I feel like Brie needs work, but I love Nikki. I, I feel like it was unfair how they cut her promo on Friday Night SmackDown because it was a very great promo, and I feel like it should have been showcased. And I also felt like it was shady that they didn't even play the full thing on Monday Night Raw. But I guess it's because she really bashed AJ Lee down as a heel, more towards a heel, and she built herself more as a baby face. I think that's where she kind of messed up, and I think that's why they kind of cut down the promo, because the cut-down version of the promo, she was very heelish in it. But They didn't want to confuse the fans. Yeah, I, um, yeah exactly, because Nikki kind of went the wrong route. She tried to get personal, and she really did get personal towards AJ Lee, but she went more as a baby face promo. So I feel like that's where she messed up. She messed it up. I'll admit this. I, I, I am a loyal Bella stan, but I will admit when they are in the wrong, the part where she messed up was that she's like, I have to consider the kids in this audience. Yes. So, like, and the other thing about... Because John Cena ain't giving her none. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, to put it all in a nutshell with AJ Lee, AJ Lee is the division of the... It is She is the division. You cannot come and sit over here and tell me that this <laughs> oh girl... God, no, no. You can't come on and say that this girl did not... And then tell me that you're... You're not a delusional Bella fan because I believed you until you came in and said that she's not the division. I was literally, she's not. I was sitting back. I was like, what? 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 Then who is? Who the fuck is? <laughs> it's not the Bellas. It's definitely not the Bella twins. These girls cannot. Nikki, who's been improving so much, and I love her. I always give her her light. I'm gonna tell you right now, she is not a well-rounded performer like AJ Lee. I'm sorry, AJ Lee can talk, she can work in the ring, she's held the title on numerous occasions, and she's deserved it, and she worked her way up to the top, she didn't sleep her way to the top, she worked her way through the top, that's the storylines that she was given, it's not her fault that WWE put all this trust and faith into this girl, because they saw something in her, like how they saw in Trish Stratus, Trish delivered, they saw in AJ Lee, AJ Lee is delivering right now. Nikki Bella is still growing. This girl, is she, you know, it's something she fell into. It's not something she loved. AJ Lee loves this. AJ Lee is a fan living out her dream. So, of course, she's going to be better. So, I don't want people to come and throw shade on this girl who's doing amazing things for the division. If she wasn't there, I, honestly, I don't know what the fuck would go on with the division. Wait, James. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's all I got to say. Clock okay, out. I like to say, um, I don't think... AJ Lee is the division, so I'm gonna Thank agree you. with like. How I, however, I feel like she is the face of the divas. She's division. the leader. I, uh, I don't know about this. She's uh, the leader. Right here. Trish was the leader for her generation. AJ Lee's the leader for this generation. And nobody could take that away from her. Seriously. Like, but the thing is, you can't have one person define the divas division. There's numerous talents. No, 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 no. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, she, she's the main girl. That's right. What I'm exactly. She's the locker room leader. Everybody should look up to her and see what she's uh, doing. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I don't know. Okay, go ahead, Nikki. I'm gonna go. Let you. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Oh, that's all I was gonna say. I just feel like. 
like you can't give all the credit to one specific diva for the entire division. Yes, but you can give credit to AJ for giving spotlight back to the division because before her, before any of these mm-hmm. storylines with her, the divas division was nothing. nothing. Michael Cole would interrupt these matches and be like, "Can we get this over with, please?" And it was just like it was really pathetic. So Mommy. yes, AJ um, brought back attention to the divas division, but I feel like. Girls like Paige, girls like the Bella Twins, they are um, bringing spotlight as well and kind of making the Divas, Divas division more relevant. The so I just want to give them credit as well. The thing that you said about um, AJ, Nikki, about how, like, remember when she was it, she was on the roster, but she wasn't in the Divas division when she was working with all these guys. And right. the Divas had all basic tag matches, basic tag matches, no meaning, no nothing. The, even the Divas champion was in matches. The Divas title the Divas was... The Divas champion wouldn't even be on Raw for, like, three or four weeks. Yes. Like, it was ridiculous. AJ Lee was building her character. Once the fans got to learn AJ Lee, we got to see her character and everything. When she came into the women's division and started actually working with the Divas, we knew what she's capable of. So people were more interested to see more storylines out of AJ. Because her and Caitlyn was one of the first storylines in a while. Yeah. So... It is AJ Lee. She's the one who turned the, turned the loop around for the Divas division. You got to give it to her. But then at the same time, you got to give spotlight to the Bellas for bringing this yes. whole, whole total Divas aspect into I, the Divas I give well. them their props. This bitch is clapping. Fucking clapping. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> the fan. I love it, please. I, this is... Okay, I'm sorry, Gigi. I, I, I just want to say one last little statement, and then I'll let you go on your little ahead. tangent. Um... <laughs> Okay, back, like, what I was saying, on a little further note, there are those delusional AJ Lee fans that I'm not going to talk to. I, that was just talking to the regular old schmo AJ Lee fan, but now I'm going to talk to these stands that think they're about it. First of all, they want to talk about, I have seen, I have actually followed AJ Lee stands on Twitter just to see what these hoes are saying, and I go on there, and they are so rude. They want to say... Things like, ugh, this is why John Cena won't marry you, ugh, like, stuff like that. And, and then they want to say, like, <laughs> oh, my God, Maria Kanellis was right, and I was like, bitch, don't bring up Maria Kanellis, her ass over there in the Indies, these girls in WWE. So that's the first thing. Second of all, people want to be like, oh, my God, I hope the Bella Twins die. They've done nothing for the division. They're sluts. And I'm like, don't call my queen sluts, first of all. Second of all, don't. These girls have worked. This is what I said earlier. I, I even said it on Twitter. I told people. The Bella Twins and AJ have all, all three girls have worked so hard. They worked so hard to get to the po- to get to the place where they are. AJ, yes, yeah, she's been wrestling longer and she loves the business. And the Bella Twins kind of came into this saying, "Oh yeah," they even admitted it too. Like in their interviews they've done, they said like they saw it on TV and they thought they should do it. AJ Lee's been wanting to do this since she was like a little girl, so I understand that she has a more big of a passion for the business, but. It's not right for fans to say that the Bella Twins didn't work hard to get where they are. These girls were put through, well, and I think in my opinion, embarrassment for two years being those little twin girls that just got to come around when the special whoa, whoa, guests whoa, came Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. But that, Wait, was, no, the time, on, Jim, no, the that was the time that the Bella Twins, there was reports of the Bella Twins partying really hard, running in and out of hotel rooms without their tops on, and all this Ooh, bullshit. All those stories this? are out. Until they got with John Cena and Daniel Bryan, that's when they got their shit together and grew up. And started, got, no, yeah. it's the Whoa, truth. Okay, hold, hold on. It's hold. the truth. I couldn't deal with the Bellas, but Gigi, go ahead. <laughs> Gigi, we need you in here. Okay, yeah, AJ's go ahead. Girl. So let me defend the queen and explain to you why she is the queen. Okay, so okay. you said she was with all these guys, and they put her with all these guys in these storylines, and she that's how she became a big diva. The reasons why the Bellas didn't get that is because when they debuted, they weren't shit. They were on some Rosa Mendez, can't do shit right type it's thing. True. When oh, AJ debuted, no, 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 she was no, no, on NXT. No, 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 let me go. I let, let you go. Finish. I let all you guys let talk this my time. So then <laughs> AJ, she was on NXT. She can, Was she like queen bitch then? No, she wasn't. But she was good. She was good on the mic. She was cute. She could go in the ring. So they said, okay, we're going to put you with Daniel Bryan. She did good in that fucking storyline. And then they said, okay, now Kane, now Punk, now John Cena. Yeah, all that shit happened. But guess what? She wasn't overshadowed by any of these men. And these men are like top talent. Mm -hmm. Want to know why the fucking Bella Twins are doing like, oh, they're coming out with Chase Atkins. Want to know why? Because when they're in the ring, when they, before they left, 
they're like these girls they have little frilly little fucking pants on and stuff and they're like they're in the ring they can't do their finishers their finishers the fucking face plan that shows how much wrestling skills they had back then so okay. then okay well when you ain't shit we're gonna give you not shit storylines here walk this person out to the ring walk cedric the entertainer out to the ring and then they said okay we're gonna leave and then they said, you know, WB's like, okay, we want you back. Here's a total divas contract. They're saying, you're like, oh, we really can wrestle. Okay, here's this contract. We're with Daniel Bryan and John Cena. Let's get our shit together. Good thing they did that because if they wouldn't have came back and doing the same shit except Nikki's tits are bigger, they wouldn't have done good. But yes, they finally got their shit together. But AJ has always had her shit together. Exactly. That's why she's. That's why she got t-shirts. She has t-shirts, necklaces, pendants, hats, rally towels. The Bella Twins just got a t-shirt. She did like that. Like Kim said, she's like dirty. They're like, they're finally getting their shit together. They, they're they where they should have been when they first debuted. It took them a long time, but oh, thank God they finally got there. AJ has been there. She's been holding the shit down, and she's been taking care of business while the Bellas were gone. So if they want to be okay. like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but I will agree. Yes, the Bellatons before were not taken seriously because they didn't really have a shit together. But then you were saying how they came back and like, oh, we're with Daniel Bryan, oh, we're with John Cena, we have a shit together. Brie was with Daniel Bryan since 2010 in their storyline. So that was way before in 2012 when they quit. Yeah, that's, so, that's when like Daniel that's, Bryan that's, wasn't showcased at all. And we're like, oh, that's he's not a the, good indie guy. But, and then but when Nikki he turned, was, was on, hold on. Mystery, oh, yes, Nikki yes, was, yes, 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 let me get my shit together. Nikki was with John Cena in November of 2012, too. So that was like directly right after they left. Yeah, that's like, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? So we can talk about that, too. Okay, Nikki, hold it back. Listen, the thing is, Gigi, what you said about AJ Lee, about how AJ was put with all these guys, AJ Lee was elevating these superstars. She really was. Her presence with Daniel Bryan elevated Daniel Bryan. Her presence with Dolph Ziggler elevated Dolph Ziggler. So, the thing is, like, when, um, the, who gives a fuck when the fuck the Bella Twins started dating, um, their guys? The thing is, once they started dating their guys, they wasn't for W, with W, with the company too long. They decided to leave. So, I don't give a fuck when the hell her and Daniel Bryan got together. All I know is that after she got with Daniel Bryan, she got her shit together. And same with Nikki Bella. She got with John Cena, the top guy who works hard and all this bullshit. She got her shit together. And now they're playing a lot of catching up. They have a lot of catching up to do, Blake. They're not as... Like, they are great divas. I love Nikki Bella. But <laughs> is she a more okay, rounded... You're, you're, okay, you keep throwing shade at Brie Bella, so I'm gonna need you to stop. Well, Brie Bella's not as good. It's true. It's I true. Mean, she's not as good. They're stuck on the mic. Let's just put that out there now. Whoa, 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 Okay, Nikki just cut a promo and she did it as a baby face. The fuck, bitch, you have one job. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I don't feel like... <laughs> I don't feel like Nikki's bad. I don't feel like she's bad on the mic. I feel like she's good on the mic. I never said she's great. She's not as bad as Brie. The thing is, she just needs more direction. But she's working hard. I see the growth in her. Like, I say Cameron. I see Cameron's learning. But same with Nikki Bella. I feel like her promo skills, she's getting better and better and better. And she works, like Nikki always said, they're more natural heels. They, he prefers them as heels, and I prefer Nikki Bella as a heel any day. So it kind of threw me off when she went to go throw a promo as a baby face. That's when I was like, whoa, girl, whoa, 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 get it together, get it together. That's why it was all edited. I don't think it was shade. So I don't understand why the fans went all crazy when she, she didn't deliver her promo correctly. But I still like them, and Brie just needs to get it together with the mic, with the mic work. I'm sorry, she can't act. She cannot. Well, when act. Nikki's telling you, I wish you died in the womb, you can't have much to react to. I we knew she was shit from when Daniel, oh my God, came to the car, Daniel. No, I will say, I don't think AJ is the division because I feel like that's like a really fucked up statement to say because, like, you have like, what, 15 girls on the like, roster? I, I and get it. Alicia. She, she is Alicia. the face of the division. She's the reason why the Divas actually have storylines now. Yeah. Yes, Total Divas helped, but before Total Divas, these girls, like we said, they weren't doing shit. Is AJ the division? No, the girls are the division, but she's the face. She's the reason why Natalia has a t shirt. Caitlin got a t shirt. Bella Twins, you know those ugly t shirts? Oh. You're the reason that she got. Ooh. Okay, but Gigi, you can't. <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, I, this is how, okay, I Lost respect words, you for being girl. a loyal AJ Lee fan, <laughs> but you have to respect me for being a loyal Bella Twin fan. I do. The, no, I know you do, I'm just saying. I know, um, but you tear down AJ Lee and you don't give her her, her accolades, her props, which she's no, done. No, 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 James, no, 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 no. You didn't say one I, nice thing. Okay, l okay, then let, let me finish. Go ahead, <laughs> the spotlight is um, on you. But, um... Okay, let me get to, like, the positives of A.J. Lee. Let's go. Hurry up. We're okay, get this okay. What I was saying is that, okay, 
She's done a lot for the division. She's the reason, yes, why Divas are getting a lot more storylines. And I do agree that she... I'm not going to say she's the face of the division. I can't say that. I'm sorry. Um, but I do agree that she's helped the Divas division a lot. And I think that if it wasn't, if she was not here today, I still think we'd still have the same 2010 division way back in the day. But, you know, I respect AJ Lee. She's worked hard. And I do not, I haven't thrown I don't know about the Bella Twins fans, but I mean, like, I don't throw shade at AJ Lee. I always tell people on Twitter, I'm like, they both work. They you called her a whore. <laughs> Huh? What? You what? called her a whore earlier. Called her a whore. Yes. That's when, did I, when did I say that? Earlier, you went on. You were like, she slapped her weight to the top. She with a whore. did. I'm I was, telling you guys oh my right God. now. No, no, no. Oh okay, no, 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 no. Let me. That's I'm like telling you. The AJ character, technically, yeah, right? The AJ character. Yeah, okay. okay. This is the pro. Okay. Yeah, Look, her character could be a whore, but girl. If you want. Okay, this is my thing. If you want to say what I meant was that I guarantee you. If AJ hadn't gone through the process of being with all those guys, she would not be at the place she is right now. I promise you. Yeah, because WWE trusted her enough to be able to do that. Because the reason she got over was because she was with like the big guys like CM Punk. Yeah, whatever. but she was not giving Brie like promos. Okay, but okay. If this is my big question, if she's the face of the company, not the company, the face of the Divas division, and she's like the main girl, like you said, James. Then how come during her matches they chant CM Punk? If they were real about it and she was because over, wrestling they could chant AJ. Oh my God, wrestling fans, fans chant what to every other they word somebody Randy says? They chant Randy Savage during Randy Orton like promos. They, yeah. they, they do stupid they do shit stupid when we get shit. bored, okay? There's guys out there drinking. Half of them are drunk. I know I can't go to an event sober. And, like, they just, they, they see AJ Lee, oh, she's married to Punk. Oh, CM Punk, CM Punk. That's just the trend now. When somebody cuts a promo, it's what, what. When they ask a question now, it's yes, yes, yes. That's just how they are. It's annoying. But it's just one of those annoying chats that we get. What about the JBL chants? Is JBL over? No as hell. Like, come on. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. When like when they're having when the when the Divas have matches on Raw, like just like last week when AJ and Brie had a match, they were chanting JBL. So that's what I'm saying. You can't sit here and say that they're the main that she's the main girl or whatever because if she was and people took her seriously, then they would be into the match and they would be chanting her name and they would be cheering for. Her. They don't. That's yeah, like, put the credit on. But- Discredit on her because that's just a general WWE fan because most of them aren't fans of the Divas matches. Yeah. Like so they're going to chant whatever they want if they're bored in a Divas match. So, I mean, regardless, whenever AJ Lee does come out, fans give her a pop. And I don't know. I feel like you can't kind of discredit her for that. Yeah, that we're basing... Never... We're against Nikki? Oh, I was just saying exactly. three on one handicap match, straight up. No. <laughs> if you're gonna... I feel, this is like I'm the only Bella person here, and everyone no, else. No, I'm like, a Bella guy. Yeah. I like Nikki Bella. I never throw shade at Nikki ever. I love I her. Do. I think I she, do. yeah, they okay. throw shade at her. I love Nikki. I think she's beautiful. I follow her on every social media. She's my woman crush Wednesday, for God's sake. And like, I love her. I think she's talented. But like, when it comes to her and AJ, I don't. Don't see the comparison. I'm sorry, AJ She's Lee is better. Uh, like, oh my god! I, I get <laughs> that okay. you're a fan yeah, of her. Like, that's better that's kids, and that's about it. Okay, okay, yeah. Gigi. We're like beating up on a dead horse. <laughs> no, but see, whatever. this is what it's fine. Can, we don't like you dislike can... you. It's just uh, we just don't agree that you think the Bella Twins. That's all. It's nothing personal. No, 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 no. no. This is no. T- this is all just tough love. Yeah. I'm just saying that this is how you can tell who like. See, the real fans out there of whoever they stand for always stand for who they whoever they stand for, and they don't let the haters come by and affect that. But they also give... I, I critique the Bell Twins all the time because that's how you know who a real fan is, if they're willing to put their stand over, but they're also willing to point out their flaws. That's how you know they're a real fan because I do agree that the Bell Twins need more work. I do agree that the way Nikki Bell won the title was crap. I wanted them to have an actual match. However, the way it happened, of course, it raised questions. This is how this, that's when it all started. After Survivor Series, it was, it was, it was, it was even before the promo that AJ cut on Raw saying talent is not sexually transmitted. People started the war Sunday night Survivor Series saying how, I can't believe that. Like, you know, AJ lost the belt in like, what, 33 seconds because of Brie. Like, you know, it started that night. 
and I didn't think it was that serious. However, I do think they should have had a match because they both deserved it. They deserved, they deserved that Survivor Series spotlight to have an actual match. Wasn't that due to time constraints, though? That's what I heard from the show. So I'm pretty it sure... It was. It was. I read something where they said... Um, they said something... Go ahead. They told the girls, like, but when they were setting up their spots, you only have 30 seconds. Right. Yeah, they so told us like that they... they... wanted to give them that proper exposure at TLC. So, I mean, that happens all the time. Yeah. Whenever there's a major pay-per-view and there's major stuff going on, if they need to scrap time, it... I'm sorry, but it's going to be for a diva. And you know why they scrap time? They... This is what... Um, I read... I don't know. I don't know. I read so many dirt sheets. I'm sorry, guys. I never remember the names. But um, I read somewhere that they were in Gorilla, and they just told them right before they were going out, that they only had um, 30 seconds. No, I heard that they were going over the match when somebody came in and told them that they only had 30 seconds. But the reason why they have time chase because obviously they had to have that huge slow motion walk of Sting come down to the ring and have that stare off with Triple no, H. No, you know and... what? Like, who gives a fuck? The, the real D... Yeah. The, um, the, what was it? The Bella Twins... Um, not the Bella Twins, the... What is okay. it called? That diva tag match it was amazing. That was awesome. I love that. Amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. So like, if they gave the Bella Twins the thirty seconds with EJ Lee, that's fine. I like quick title changes. Title changes. No, don't me happen too. I one, like two, three. Too. Yeah, like I, I. It was a surprise. It was boom, bam. Nikki's the champ. Fine. Then they'll have their blow. It, all they did was progress storyline between the two. Because look, and now we got all the fans riled up. The AJ Lee fans, the Nikki Bella fans, they're all crazy about it. So the WWE, they're doing the right thing. They're getting fans more invested into the Divas, more fans tweeting about the Divas. Because all I saw that night was, oh, Bella Twins this, AJ Lee fans this, blah, 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 blah. I love that show. I was like, see, people are talking about the Divas division because they're getting personal. And that's what the Diva divisions was lacking. Personal feuds, like Trish and Lita's personal feud when Lita was pregnant and all this bullshit, Trish calling her a whore, like all this shit went over, that's what they need, and then we had the Trish side and we had the Lita side, so I'm glad that this is happening, I'm glad, all this is gonna do is for your girl, um, Blake, um, Nikki Bella, working with AJ Ambry. Lee, is, is working with AJ Lee on the top of the Divas division is, that's as high as you're gonna go on the Divas division right now. So this, you should be grateful your girl is working with somebody like AJ Lee. No, 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 AJ Lee's no, gonna I teach am, her. I am grateful. I'm just saying, people wanted to put like little smart ass remarks, and of course. But you can't listen to that shit. People don't like. Who cares about <laughs> stupid fans? Like that's what I don't understand. Be you, love your girl, and let it be. Like I love Melina. People call her a hoe every day, every other day. Today I had to send her a tweet and put her together, but I did it respectfully because that's my girl. But the thing is, is like people call her a hoe, say she slept around, she's this, she she became diva champion because oh she she couldn't keep her ass off but Jesus dick, all the nonsense. But that's my girl. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I think she was one of the greatest divas that ever walked through those curtains. And people can be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Lita was, Trish was. It's inedible. Everybody likes somebody. So I wouldn't take it out on AJ Lee because her fans are saying your suck. So you can't just go and be like, no, AJ Lee sucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I like, like it doesn't make sense. Like, but this is like another thing is like when I talk about the Bella Twins, I mean obviously, like y'all, 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 y'all follow me on Twitter. I talk about the Bella Twins constantly because they're like they're like my everything. So, and then like people want to tell me stop standing so hard for them. I can do whatever the hell I want to do. So don't tell me what to do. First of all, and second of all. That's just called being a fan. I like wrestling. I like divas wrestling. Why do you have to come into my space? Don't come down my timeline and bring a reply to my tweet saying how stop standing so hard, stop this, stop that. Don't tell me what to stop, because that's what called. That's what a fan is called. Like you stand for whoever you want to stand for, no matter what people say, okay. and that's how you know you're a loyal fan. Wait, let agree. me ask you this. Um, yes. Since we have you on, we're gonna ask you some other questions. Who else do you like on the division? Besides okay, I like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you actually look at my bio on Twitter, I list the people that I like along with Bella Twins. Well, so well, who, who's behind I, them? Let's hear one. Who's my what? Let's hear who's who. Who do you like after the Bella Twins? Okay, so like right under the Bella Twins, I have AJ Lee. People think that I don't like. Are AJ you kidding Lee. me? No, I, I can't. You. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. are nowhere on my list. They're not even on my Google page. Like, I don't fuck with those girls. <laughs> okay, so, what's it called? Basically, like, people think that, like, I just stand for the Bell Twins. That's who I stand for, of course. But, like, honestly, I love every single diva. Seriously, like, I do. Like, I, 
I love every single diva. The divas division we have right now, I love every single one of them. <laughs> despite wrestling skills, despite promo work, despite everything under the books, I love all my WWE divas, all of them. I There's I, even even Marie. I know she sucks in the ring. I like her. Rosa Mendez. You can't win a match, and you never will win a match, probably. But I still love her as a diva. Like I think the divas division we have right now is a very strong division, and I can agree with that. I think that like even though there's there's some girls that lack in wrestling skills or lack in promo skills, but if you put all of them collectively together, we have a strong division that consists of people who can cut promos and who can work in the ring, have charisma, and bring in viewers. So I think if that we just have a strong division in general. I think you can say that because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there are certain ones that need some some help. Um, even oh Cameron. my god, I can't. <laughs> Oh, we're not about to get into Cameron. I'm no, okay. Out. Little Miss Eva kid. Marie. Oh my God, Tom, don't kill me, don't kill me. Eva Marie, first of all, why in God's green earth would you move all the way back to LA? Your ass needs to be down in Tampa, Florida, at the Performance Center on a daily basis. Why would you move halfway across the country to go live in LA? Oh, I'm gonna move back to LA. Like, you why? You can't spell why? performance center, first of all. <laughs> <sighs> oh my goodness. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand why you really think that if this girl wants to pursue this as a career, wants to be taken seriously, and like wants to cry, oh, they like they boo me, oh, yeah, you wanna cry about it, but then you wanna move to LA the next minute you have because your husband. I'll if say you, it right now, I don't care. I feel like Eve Marie is using WWE just as a stepping stone to elevate her career in like Hollywood. Basically. You don't think I, she wants you don't think she wants to be No, I honestly don't think she has the passion to No, be, never at all. To be a you, James. I think the same thing as Cameron. Um, oh no. no Cameron's okay. a different story. Cameron's when a he, different story. Like people discredit her so much. This girl is not as bad as people think she is. And people no, yes, she's I like not. Her. She's not at and, all. Like, with um, the, but going back to Eva Marie real quick, with Eva Marie, I um, my thought on her is, I, I like her. I like her as a person. But do do I feel like the WWE is a spot for her? I would like it to be. I can see her character being utilized because I really love her look. And if she's not into it and she wants to leave, like, I would be, no bridges would be burned with me. I'd be like, okay, who cares? You know, like, you really didn't do much when you were here. So, it's like, she hasn't been on TV for how many weeks? But, like, I would like her to come back. I like her. I think she has a gorgeous look. And I feel like she, she can grow into becoming something better than what she is. She just needs to focus. And then when I found out that she moved to California, that's when I was just like, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe it's because she's married. She wanted to buy a house. But who are we? to know that she doesn't have an apartment she she purchased a home she probably still renting an apartment down at um florida so we don't know her situation it's just going off rumors but what she really needs to do is get her ass down at nxt and start training that's Especially all, with all this time that she's yeah been she's i been... think that all this time she's been off i hope she's been out of the performance center because i swear to god if this bitch comes back and she is not at at a decent level i'm gonna go off because like I like I want success where I see something in her like I see if this girl has the wrestling skills and you can tell she's a natural born heel if she would get the promo work and the wrestling skill I honestly think this may be over exaggerated but whatever I think she can be like one of the top heels of all time <laughs> no I think no. all I think Wait, is, no, okay. is that She's like she's a television stopper. Like if someone like if some guys flipping through the channels and they see Eva Marie on their TV, they're gonna stop and be like, "Damn, she's bad. Who is she?" Yeah, that's but when why she starts wrestling, they're not no. they're gonna change the channel because she can't exactly, do shit. Gigi. And I'm sorry if you can't cut uh, if you can't cut a promo and you can't wrestle, why the fuck are you here? And then she leaves to get breast enhancements. Like no bitch, leave to go get like performance center work. Like with her, she, what she needs to do is she needs to be in a non wrestling role. She needs to be a manager of valet. They need a planner. So I always said they could have put her with Alberto Del Rio or either Rosa but, Mendez. But, like, but Rosa, James, I'm just so like, done with her. I, I'd she, rather have somebody new, somebody fresh that we don't know. And I feel like Eva Marie would have did that well. Just stand there and look pretty and get paid to be a total diva and be the model for the company. Be on Maxim Magazine, Hot 100 list. That's what she's But see, for. this is the thing. If she's a manager 
And let's okay. Let's say for but not every manager got to talk. Like she could just be the model type that don't. You know how they say models are dumb. They don't talk. They're so serious. Do uh, what Rose is doing right now because she's not talking, but she is being entertaining as Fandango's manager. At least what I think. Oh my god, I don't even want to talk about that. You see what happened with Fandango? But this is the thing. Let's say she. Let's say okay. Let's say for example, she is serious about wanting to wrestle. Let's say she is one to be serious about it. I know that when they put her on live TV, they she always says that it's because she's in a live crowd. But I feel like, okay, you've had enough matches right now. You know the crowd is going to be 15,000 people. But I think that girls will never get better unless they have matches. I understand the matches may be bad, but they're never going to learn if they're never in matches. Well, she wrestles. She wrestles. She wrestles. She wrestles. She wrestles. She wrestles. She wrestles on live TV. Like, they don't put her on um, television. That sounds so stupid to say. But that, that's what they used to do with Rosa Mendes. Rosa Mendes never wrestled live TV. They would just have her on on the live shows. So, the, the, clearly, they have no, they're have they building her. Rosa Mendes, they just had no trust in her. Because if you've been with the company for so long, they only have you wrestling for live shows. They don't give a fuck. They, that's pretty uh, sad. They finally found a good spot for her with um, Fandango. I feel like it would be a good spot. But she, and then she can't dance. And I'm like, oh, God, what can you do? Every time she does that drop down, I think she falls. Yeah, it's so awkward. <laughs> like, like, the I way can't. she gets down. It's like 84, seat. y'all. Give her a break. And then the kitten heels. They can't. And then I look at her. I know. I, like, I can't stand those heels. I was like, maybe it's the shoes. Maybe it's the shoes. I looked down at I the shoes. I have an issue with how she's not. Like, because I loved Rosa when she was managing Primo and Epico. And I don't know if she's trying to personify a new character with this whole fan thing, so. but she's just like grabbing her tits the whole time outside and like, so, like i don't know but i do yeah, like they kind of hang kind of low so she got to bring them up yeah i know <gasps> yeah. they oh. hang really low the shade oh my gosh they hang <laughs> so low and the thing with her is like she's trying to be like sexy but rose is like the awkward sexy like she's the type of girl she looks to me like like all right Oh, people are going to think I'm being mean, but it's the truth. She looks like those girls that, especially when she was, I know she cleaned up, she don't drink anymore, but she just reminds me of a girl that just gets passed around at a bar. Like, she's just sloppy. Like, she's pretty, you know, like a pretty whore. Like, that's what she looks like to me. I'm sorry. Like, I think she's pretty and everything, but come on. Like, if she went on Total Divas and she act like a little slew her damn self, so whatever. <laughs> What's it called? Um, she speaking... had some wild times, that Rosa Mendez. Speaking of heels, have y'all talked about um charlotte versus sasha banks for nxt revolution when is the revolution day? that's 11, it's, december 11th i think oh my god that's it's like next, next week. thursday oh i'm so excited i'm, I'm super, can't wait i can't wait head to head on that one because sasha's taking that title oh my god me and nick are gonna so, drag each other claire jr you're losing it she's gonna lose that title oh she's gonna lose it oh my gosh i can't wait i wanted oh my god nick are you watching it live no, I don't think so. Uh -huh. I still don't have the network, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me stay something. <laughs> I can't wait to see. You know why? Because I love Sasha Banks. I think she's an amazing heel. And I hope that when they put her on the WWE main roster, they just cut her loose and let her go. And they don't water her down. And everybody knows that Charlotte is my favorite diva currently on the roster. And I think it's just going to be a great freaking match. And you know what? If, if your girl takes the title, I will not be mad. Because she deserves it. I'm, not, I'm realistic. My favorite but, doesn't always have to be champion. But see, people aren't considering this is that, like, people, like, what's it called? They're talking about how they want to, they're going to call Charlotte up um, very, very quickly after NXT Revolution. So I'm expecting her to get called up by the end of the year or early next year. But my question is, is I don't understand how she's going to fit into the division. I don't know how they're going to use her either. No idea. There's, like, th there's not, I mean, not, I'm not saying there's no spot for her because obviously there's a spot. But, like, every girl is not doing something but like there's like no you can't just put a girl like charlotte it just you can't just throw her in there and just let her like debut and then like she because gets a win they change, but... they're changing her gimmick they put her she's obviously going to debut with her dad the only, yeah. the, the they're only... debuting they're i'm um, changing her name the only thing but I... they look alike her and her what dad do you mean they're exactly changing her name <laughs> <laughs> they're changing her name they're not um they said on the tickets for live events in january um, she was posted to be on the, live, the, the WWE main roster live events for January, and her name is going to be Charlotte Flair. Like, oh, okay. Put Flair yeah. on the end. On the They're end just of her name. Add the Flair. That's fine. I'm here for it. I thought they were going to make her go. I, I was like, if they make her lose her name, I'll be really pissed off because she's already named moves after it. Like the Charlotte's Web Pin. I love that name. Ugh. I just she love hasn't that used it in a long time. I know. I, I want to see that. I know, but I feel like she'll bring it back. She has just a big arsenal like um, Naomi. I can't wait to see a match with her and fucking Naomi. Have you guys talked about Naomi since Push? Yeah, yeah, we talked about her. 
Okay, I just want to say real quick about her. I'm so happy, so happy that this girl is finally given some credit and just like an actual storyline on Monday Night Raw. I was so happy to see her being used. And then they were talking about her on main event this week, just consistently for the entire show. And then um, the spoilers on SmackDown. So I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with her. Do you think Maurice will return? I hope so. I love Maurice. She's one of, She's been one of my favorite divas of all time. So I feel like they should keep her until TLC. I feel like they should have Naomi accompany the Usos down to the ring. Um, and then Maurice come and debut attacker, maybe give her the French kiss on the outside. And then um, they retain their titles and just have like a, a six way kind of feud for Royal Rumble. Yeah, I, I, it would, I think it would be yeah, great. It would that be was a, my same prediction. It would be a great way for Ms. Dow and Miss to keep the title from the distraction by Maurice outside. Um, just attacking Naomi and the Usos can just you know, you know like they wouldn't have to like interfere in the match because you know how they don't let Divas get physical so I think it would be perfect the Usos just looking out and just see Maryse whip their girl's ass and then Miz gets a roll up or something I think that would be a great way I just I can just see Miz and Miz Dow on the corner turnbuckles raising the titles Maryse in the middle flipping her hair oh. mm-hmm. and putting the hand up oh my god yeah I want it I want it so badly so I feel like that's what they're leading to because there was some shade on Twitter. I don't know if you guys seen it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've seen it. And it's funny because WWE has also been tweeting shit with Maryse. They're like, oh, check out all the vintage pictures of all the divas. And they have Maryse spread out on it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, they just more hints, more hints, more hints. I hope Maryse comes back. But me and Blake were talking. We were saying that if it doesn't happen by TLC or the Monday Night Raw after, I don't think she's coming back. I feel like maybe they'll save it for the first Monday Night Raw of 2015. Because you know they always do like huge big things. But to stretch it that long with Naomi... <laughs> Because, like, see, they've been talking about, if you noticed, they, like, James, like you said, they've been throwing little hints at us. Um, Maurice, she's been tweeting during Raw. A lot. Because I follow, yeah, she's been tweeting during Raw. She was featured with Miz as a power couple on the WWE poll. Miz talks about her on Twitter now. The discussion between her and Naomi this past Monday night. Naomi and even they, invited her to and, the ring. Like, I'm like, And then they want to mention her all during AJ's reign. Like, this girl is going to come back. I mean... She said she was never going to come back. She's going to do her little House of Maurice thing. But come on. That was a flop. I'm sorry. That was a flop. I'm sorry. <laughs> she said she had a lot of sales in the UK. So I'm like, oh my God, calm down. Tom bought them all. <laughs> yeah, Tom bought them all. <laughs> yeah, but I think we're done. I think we covered everything, didn't we, Gigi? Yep. Oh, good. This was fun. It was a fun show. But Blake, tell everybody where they can find you. Okay, so you can find me on Twitter. My name is Bella Twins Guy, and my um, Twitter handle is what a at... Shocker. <laughs> I know, what a shocker, I can't believe it. Um, my Twitter handle is at underscore Blake24 underscore. So, all that AJ Lee fan shade, you guys go get him. You guys know where to find him. <laughs> Just kidding, Blake. But you guys can follow me at Jimmy James J-A-Y-M-E-S. And where can we find you, Nikki? Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at Nick Aiken WWE, and you can find me on Instagram at Prince Pipe Bomb. And the AJ Lee stand of the day, GG. <laughs> you can follow me underscore underscore the diva. If you want to tweet me about how great the Bella Twins are, no, I will take low blows about Nikki Stitz because it's just so much fun to do. Gigi. You can follow me on Instagram at gorge.george. GG, fucking Nikki got nice tits, girl. Long come for her. But she at the end of the day, though. at the end of the day, Nikki Bella is still your Divas champion. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see for how long. I'm glad. I'm glad she's got a baby face promo when she and you. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Had a great title reign so far. Historic shit. Oh, God, you guys. <laughs> Bye. It's been fun. Toodles. Bye. Bye.